Well, welcome to The Conversation Hub with Brad and Jess. The Conversation Hub is a place where we will talk about faith, the Word of God, life, and anything in between. Now, if you haven't already worked out, my name is Brad, and this is my lovely wife, Jessica Harris. Hello, Jessica. Hello, Brady. What's happening? Not much. So here we are in lockdown Six point one oh, lockdown no seven. <laughs> I've lost count with the amount of lockdowns that we have had in the state of Victoria. But I do have a question for you. Yeah. You're a mum. Yes. We have three beautiful children, yes. aged seven, four, and um, eleven months. Nearly twelve months. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. As a mum, how are you coping? Yeah, I think I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, look, actually, to be honest, I've. That's is an honest answer. I feel like I've been um uh I think all the previous lockdowns have prepared me for this lockdown. Um in that I've been really just honing in on my relationship with God and I think that's helped give me a, a bit of peace about it. And um Good. I know that we've um I mean, yes, absolutely frustrating and when like we found out it was just absolutely devastating for the kids. Abby was really frustrated she was doing so much at school that she was working towards that she was really looking forward to mm. um and as of yet toby has been able to go to kinder the whole time so this is the first time he hasn't actually been able to go which i guess the issue with our kids is that this is now it's actually normal for them because abby's now in yeah. grade one it started in, in in prep for toby he doesn't know any different yeah, yeah. so this actually is their normal this is their normal and, and that's a little scary too i think it's very but, um, scary like i yeah. i know for me like I, as you know i <laughs> I work in events and work in major events and festivals and all sorts mm. of stuff, but this lockdown has got me a little scared. Yeah. Um, just in terms of I I don't think we're going to see major events come back for a long time, if at all, Yeah. in the state of Victoria That's, in particular. It's pretty full on. It's the truth, you know. We, we will be lucky to get back to some form of event by December and that will yeah. be probably for maybe 300 to 500 people. Crazy. Which is not a lot of people. No. But in saying that, what is exciting is lately um, through reading the Word, I've been looking at Romans 12 and it keeps popping up again and again and again. Yeah. It's like God has, you know, got his big hammer out and his punching bag and his uh, big boxing fist and said, Brad, Romans 12, 12, you need to Get read. This. yeah. But in saying that, I don't normally just grab one scripture no. and read it and and um, take that as gospel. Normally I'll look above it, below it and read yeah, through it. Which you did do when you read this, but yeah. <laughs> Correct, yeah. but I don't normally just grab onto one scripture and go, uh-oh, okay, so this message, this either God is really, that, yeah. really speaking to me yeah. or I've lost the plot. I don't think I've actually lost the plot on this one. No way. So what is Romans 12.12 for those who do not know? Romans 12.12 simply – quite simply says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. It's the NIV version. Mm. The one that I like is the New King James Version, which says, rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfast in prayer. Yeah, and as people who don't know me, but if you do know me, you know I like the Amplified for these these moments, and uh, it reads... Constantly rejoicing in hope, brackets, because of our confidence in Christ. Yeah, I mean. Steadfast and patient in the distress, devoted to prayer, and in brackets again, continually seeking wisdom, guidance, and strength. And I think that's just so timely. Mm. It's it's interesting, isn't it? Because um, this particular book, the book of Romans, was written to the Romans by Paul, wasn't it? Yep. It yep. was. Paul the Apostle, yep. And it really is a, a book, I believe, that focuses on us in Christ. That's, I yeah, believe, the crux absolutely. of the message. Absolutely. It, it, um, it gives that real stark contrast of those um, who are still abiding by the law, which is the old law, and mm, the – Law and grace. And law and grace. And it's just that contrast between one and the other. Um, we're either under law or we're under grace. And Thank um, God we are now under, under grace, grace and under Hallelujah. a new covenant because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so then, yeah, it goes on. Chapter 12 then focuses um, – specifically on being with living sacrifices, and that's verse 1 to yeah. 2, goes on to uh, talking about humble service in the church, verses 3 to 8, and then finishes with a list of attributes towards those outside the church, which is the last 
uh, nine, verse 9 to 21. Mm. And so it's interesting that this whole chapter starts with us being living sacrifices um, in our body and, and just committing ourselves to God because then we are, the second part of that is being humble servants within the church, but then the purpose of that is so that we can be those people towards the, those outside the church. Um, mm. And that's where it's in that passage of those outside the church that we find this instruction to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, in affliction and faithful in prayer. Mm. But the first thing I'm going to say is, okay, so look at what's going on in our own state here of Victoria, without the rest of the world at the moment, with Afghanistan and everything that's going on that is absolutely crazy, yeah. what have I got to be joyful about? Yeah. Seriously. Well, I mean, it's like... I'm looking like having no job, yeah. no income, yeah. but yet I've got to be joyful. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's the hardest thing to, to just say to someone, be joyful, mm. um, given the circumstances that are around us. Um, but just recently I was listening to a guy who I feel like just hit the nail on the head for this one for me. Yeah. And he literally just said that our joy isn't based on our circumstances when we're in Christ. Yeah. Because our joy is in Christ, We that is not dependent on circumstances. Our happiness, yes, absolutely, it can change from moment to moment mm. depending on what's happening, whether it's the kids rubbing you up the wrong way or the government shutting us down for mm -hmm. the millionth time. <laughs> Our, our happiness can be so circumstantial and based around what is actually going on in our environment. But because the Bible tells us that we can trust God to always be there, to be constant, mm. to be the same, yesterday, today and forever, we can Everybody's trust yeah. and hope in him. And therefore, our joy comes from the Holy Spirit and that nothing can change God. Nothing can change his character. Nothing can change no. his heart. And so when, we are, um, when it says here to... To be joyful, um, one of the other versions that we read, it says, be joy joyful because you have hope. It's because of the hope we have in yeah, Christ. Yeah, we know our hope. We know that what Jesus Christ did at the cross That's where the is joy comes a from. finished and completed work. Yeah, yeah. And Peter said, I think it was Peter or Paul, <laughs> I think it was actually probably was Paul, said, in all circumstances I've learned whether I'm – um, whether I'm starving, whether I have plenty, mm -hmm. no matter what my circumstances are, I have – been learnt to be content in those exactly. circumstances because Christ is his. He's enough. Is, is he's enough. He's enough and yep. he's everything for, for each rock, and every one of us. It's his foundation, yeah, yeah. Um, but rejoicing, it's just one of those things, isn't it? If we don't do it, then we find ourselves, uh, I know myself, I've caught myself, <laughs> you know, this week and the last couple of weeks we'll be sitting down having a meal with um, you and I and the kids and whoever else may come over when we're not in lockdown and – we just talk about COVID-19. Yeah. That's just crazy. It like it. the enemy must be just sitting here going, ha ha, yeah, this is fantastic. These people are just talking about COVID-19. They're not talking about Christ. They're not, you know, they're not giving praise. They're not giving, they're not rejoicing. They're not giving thanks. Yeah. And the scary thing is when we continue to focus on our situation and our circumstances, we're actually giving the enemy a foothold into our life yeah, to continue yeah. to, you know, jibber-jabber a way at us, to continue to to tell us that we're yeah, no good, that this is, is not going to end, this is, that, yeah. you know, and you're not going to have a job. Mm. But when we rejoice and we rejoice in the hope that we know that one day we're going to be in heaven with our Heavenly Father, like that yeah. is awesome. Yeah. That is such a, an amazing thing to, to, to look forward to. Absolutely, and it, but it's not, and it's not just. It's sorry, including. It's not a but. It's a as well as being joyful and looking f forward and hoping for that for that future time when we are with Christ in heaven. The hope is for for now as well. Yeah. Um, but you imagine if we could be. We can't at the moment really walk down the street. We can still go to the supermarket. But you imagine if we can walk down the street and we're, you know, we're, we're upright. We've got a smile on our face, even though it's inside a mask. People can still see our eyes. Yeah. And someone stops and says, "What's with you? Why are you so happy? Don't mm -hmm. you know what's going on in the world? You're like mm -hmm. we are meant to be a light in the darkness." Yeah, yeah, and that comes from that constantly being knowing where our our source of joy comes from, Correct. where our source of hope comes from. Um, because, I mean, we, it doesn't matter what people say, they can't mm. change God and they can't change his character and his spirit within us. And so when we are allowing ourselves to be ruled and governed by the spirit and not by 
the flesh, the not flesh. by yeah. not by our our temptation our to our to feel depressed or to feel yes. hopeless because of what's going on. Um, I know that I think that probably that's been the one thing that's struck me is that I've found myself feeling like, okay, God, I get what's going on in the world right now. Mm. What am I supposed to do about it? Where am I, like, what are you actually, I know I can pray. That's the, the like, number one go-to I think it's thing. probably the only but, thing that we can do is Yeah, pray. absolutely. Um, but then like my, my, I guess, humanity is going, how do I reach out to people? How do I yeah. help people? I, I feel like I'm just sitting at home and, you know, I do grumble about, oh, the kid's really frustrate me today because of X, Y, Z. But there's a whole community, whole country out there, countries that are that are suffering and that are uh, have been isolated for a lot longer than we have, that have um, had way harsher conditions than we have, who have lost way more people um, to the virus um, or even to the vaccine. Like the, there's the problem just is, been though, so in the state of Victoria is that we do have this – crazy lockdown mentality in Victoria. We've been locked down for, uh, particularly in Melbourne, for like 200 days. Like we're a laughing stock to the world. Yeah. It's crazy. It, but I don't want to get caught up on COVID-19. No. What I want to get caught up on is the fact that we need to rejoice and we need to give thanks yeah. to God for what he has done. As yeah. you said before, he's, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. He is not changing. He will not change. Yeah. And he always hears our prayers. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Always, no matter what we're going through. And that's that's what I love about him is that he's always there in every moment. Mm. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, yep. for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. And how often are we sitting there going, well, what's your will for me? What is it you want me to do? And, again, like I was just saying before, sometimes yeah. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to go? Who am I supposed to help? But God just says to rejoice always and to pray continually because that's his will. His will for us is to seek mm. him, is to seek his wisdom, his guidance and his strength. Yeah. Oh, look, I know when people ask me that question, you know, oh, what, what, is my, what is God's will for my life? My usual response is, well, when you know the word, you'll know your will. Yeah, absolutely. When you're living, um, allowing that to to lead your life, <laughs> you, you'll never be bored. There's always going to be something yeah, to exactly. do. I mean, you just read through this passage, read through Proverbs, and just pick any of one of those and yeah. you could find something to focus your life on for the next five minutes or the next five years for that matter. All right. So moving on to the second part of this is how then do we be patient in tribulation, in affliction. in affliction, in troubles. Like, come on, seriously. I, We, we all want to kill Daniel. Kill is probably too strong a word, but we all want to grab Daniel happy. Andrews and say, hey, buddy, <laughs> we're not happy. We get you doing your job or you're trying to do your job, but enough's enough. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, patience is, <laughs> is sort of out the window, I think, with most people when you ask them about circumstances in life right it now. It is, but when, but when we're patient, when, when we wait on God yeah. – then he he answers our prayers. Yeah. You know, we, we need to learn to just stop. Yeah. Because this silly conversation about what's going on in the world yeah. is going on and on and on. It's at work, it's at home, it's everywhere you go. It's not now long longer, oh, how you doing? It's like, oh, we're in another lockdown. What's going on? What's happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is madness. We need like, to oh, press the stop really button really. here yeah, yeah, and just slow down. Yeah. God has everything under control. Yes. He has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us to prosper. Yeah, absolutely. You That's know, right. we need to be patient in this time of tribulation, in, in this time of, of craziness, and we need to focus on Christ. Yeah. And it, look, when we feel like we don't have strength to be patient, because I know I've done that a few times, I've just gone, I don't, I don't know how to do that right now. Um, I just ask God to help. And I just say, look, God, um, this is where I'm at. <laughs> this is how I'm feeling. And patience is the last thing I've got on my mind right now. I don't have any patience to begin <laughs> with. So imagine so, me in this crisis situation. Yeah. So it's. I'm already out of control. It's it's so hard. And it's it's one of those things, you, you know, you always say to other Christians, oh, don't ever pray for patience because, you know, you, you'll get tested yeah, on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sort of gets becomes this in joke. But I think it's important it's like to remember. like that same prayer of, oh, God, test me and show me your, your ways. Mm. Never ask him to test you because he will <laughs> he test will you. He will do now. it. Be careful what you ask for. You might just get it. Um, and that's the thing. It's um, patience. I, I think the important thing there to remember is 
uh, patience is one of the fruits of the spirit. And, yeah. and I bring that up because I think sometimes we feel like we have to achieve patience on our own. But when we are just abiding in Christ and we were just doing the faithful thing of just getting into his word or just spending time with Jesus, then patience isn't something we have to sit there and go, come on, come on, be patient, mm. be patient, be patient. It is a fruit. A fruit. It, it just comes naturally out of that relationship with Christ. Yeah. He's the vine, we're the branches. Well, the word also says that we'll know them by the fruit that they, that they bear. bear, that we bear. Yeah. Yep. You know, and we should all be bearing good fruit in these times. Yeah. And patience is definitely one of them. Love yeah. is another one. Yeah. That's the and again, that's joy. One. joy. Joy. Joy, joy, joy. Joy, 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 down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. <laughs> but it is, it's all about <laughs> joy. Yeah. All right, part three of this one, what is it? Be faithful in prayer. Um, oh, I think I just sort of covered that, sorry. <laughs> well, I don't mind you covered it. But well, let's go it's back true. over it. It's we, been... we, we do, we need to be faithful in prayer. Yeah. You know, whether that's praying in the spirit, whether that's, um, just praying and having a conversation with God or whether it's just opening up your word and, and mm. praying the word over your life, praying yeah. the word over your family, your circumstances, yes. yeah, your amen. situations. It, it is such a powerful thing to open this book and pray it over your own life. Yeah, but we need to be faithful. Yeah. We need to be consistent in our prayer. Yeah. You know, we don't come to God with a shopping list that says, oh, dear God, please deal with da 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 da, 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 da And then walk away. And yeah. just walk away. Yeah. You know, does God still hear it? Yeah, he does. Of course, yeah, yeah. But he wants us to be faithful. He calls us to be faithful and holy people. Yes, yeah, and prayer is the most basic thing like any relationship. Just talking with someone mm. um, is the best way to get to know them, is the best way to find out uh, what their heart is and and whether you um, whether you want to go along with it, that yeah. um, in your life. And it's the same with God. Prayer is just talking with God and being honest with him, being raw with him, Um just in the ups, so the it's downs. Being prepared it's, to be vulnerable. Oh, absolutely. Within yourself. Oh, please, yes. If there's anything I'm gonna try and stress to everyone right now is don't be afraid to be vulnerable. It's <laughs> I feel like Australians, especially culturally, can really have a go at people who are being vulnerable, and they yeah. really trying to make a make it a really sarcastic and and just downtrodden thing to be vulnerable. But I feel like when we're vulnerable, when we're honest with first of all ourselves. Yeah. Um, it allows us to work through those things and rather than just, you know, ah, she'll be right, it's actually working through it and going, all right, God, I see that I need help. I know I need I need you to get me through this. And it's a beautiful thing to be able to just come before Jesus and say, I need you. I need yeah, I mean. your, your peace. I need your truth. I need your wisdom. And I'm not going anywhere until – Till you've given it to me, it's not. It's not. That's not about being stubborn or arrogant. It's just about going, Lord. I know you want to talk to me, and I'm. I want to hear what you have to say. I yeah. want to hear what you want to speak into my life right now, like He did with you with this passage, with Romans twelve twelve. It was. It was just. It just kept coming up and up and up for exactly. the last two weeks. And because you were listening, <laughs> I, I was listening for once. So I was actually listening. Wow, you're a very good listener. You're, you're a good. That listener. and they're not being truthful. <laughs> no, I, uh, it, but. It is, you know, I, 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 I actually listened mm. and I started to act on it. So then for me, uh, I had confirmation of this with a, with a mate of mine the other night who said to me, hey, I'd listened to this great sermon from yeah. a guy in Adelaide and guess what it was on? I said, uh, don't tell me. I said it would have been on Romans 12, 12 or a little bit on from there. And he's going, how did you know? Yeah. how the Holy Spirit works. I said, I've had Romans 12, 12 churning in me for about two weeks now. Yeah. But God's good. The Holy Always. Spirit's good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. We yeah. just have to be prepared to listen, yeah. to act. Absolutely. And I think that's – I just want to touch on that too. The Holy Spirit is so uh, helpful <laughs> to us in this time as well yeah. because when we don't know what to pray, it says that we are to pray in the Spirit because mm -hmm. he then will intercede for us yes. and it's that perfect prayer. And I know I sometimes struggle with making time to just do the real one-on-one, -on -one, me talking to God and listening to him Um but I know that if I'm driving in my car or if I'm just doing the dishes, whatever, I can just be praying in the spirit because I yeah. don't necessarily know what I'm supposed to pray, especially in these times. And um, he just, the Holy Spirit's so good when uh, because not only does it calm me as I'm as I'm praying in the spirit, yeah. it also helps. Things might come to mind when I'm praying in the spirit, and yeah. then I'm just like, oh, I'll pray for this person, or yeah, exactly. I need to pray for the government, or I need to pray for. Yep. Fully, seriously, guys, be praying for our prime minister. Be praying for yeah. our state leaders. Yeah. You know they need 
our prayers so much. They yeah. need guidance. They need, oh, man, they need to be led. They need to be yeah. led by the Holy Spirit. So please, guys, pray rather than put our our um, members of parliament down and say they should be doing this and doing that. Guys, get on your hands and knees and pray for them. Pray that God mm. will intercede. Pray that God yes, will bring them to Jesus. a place of repentance. Pray them. Pray that the hot, great Holy Spirit will will just overcome this great South Land. Yeah, yeah. You know that is my hope that this great South Land, as it has been known, mm. becomes that great South Land. Yeah, That'd and be awesome. imagine if we were all faithfully praying. Yeah. That yep. God would intercede with our government, would That's intercede it. with this virus. Yeah, you know it may not be in our timing, but no. God has a plan. He has a purpose. Absolutely, and look, He has already been using this this time to to prepare us. I feel like oh, for sure. I feel like a lot of people initially didn't know what to do with their spare time <laughs> for lockdown. Uh, they were people without children. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, had that spare time. But um, also I think a lot of us did get flustered because there was all this time that we then felt obligated to fill again and because we've been yeah. constantly um, under the pressure by life and society to to be doing something constantly and all of a sudden we're told yeah. to stop. And I feel like God's really revealed to me in that the importance of stopping mm-hmm. and really focusing and listening to what he has to say. And I think that's the biggest thing I've gotten out of out of these lockdowns and he has used this time and I hope that every Christian is out there using this time wisely and, and just seeking God and just uh, making yeah. intentional time to sit and listen and rest at his feet. It's good, Jess. Well, before we finish, have you got a thought for the week? Have you got a prayer for the week? Have you got anything? Oh, I think I just said it all. <laughs> Thank you, actually. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Wait, what about you? Do you have one? Thought yeah. for the week. Well, no, realistically, is as I've said, is let's be praying for our government. Yeah. Let's be praying for the horrible circumstances that are going on in Afghanistan at the moment with the yeah. Taliban, particularly with uh, Christians and with women, you know, women, yeah. well, young girls from 14 to, to women up to 45 who are uh, not married, you know, being dragged out of their houses and taken away with the Taliban. So, guys, let's be praying for our brothers and sisters in Christ in Afghanistan, that God, that you intercede for them. Lord, that you stop this madness of this organization taking young yeah. girls and, and, and women out of their households, Father God. Lord, you're an awesome God. We thank you. We love you, Lord. Yes, we know Jesus. that. Uh, we will continue to rejoice. We'll continue to give you thanks, mighty yes, God, that we will Lord. learn, we will we'll try and learn to be patient yeah. in times of trouble, Father God, Praise but we will you. remain faithful in prayer. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, we just thank those who are watching that they can be blessed by the things that we are saying. They can get something out of this, Father God. Lord, speak to their hearts, yes, speak Lord. to their spirit. Lord, while we're here, I just pray for anyone who may have a healing need right now. Thank in the name of Jesus and the all authority that is given to me, we say, Satan, get out of this person, be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening and watching. We hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to having you with us same time next week. God bless. God bless. Bye. See you guys. Bye.